welcome to this lecture on memory hierarchy in this lecture we'll start uh, discussing about how, how exactly we store our data uh, how processor accesses uh, data from uh, various kinds of memory and uh, what's the notion of memory hierarchy so in an ideal world if we uh, consider our uh, five stage pipeline so we actually uh, need data or, or we actually need uh, code and data at the fifth stage and at the memory stage right and as you have discussed so far so that there is an instruction memory and there is a data memory and we will start uh, expanding uh, this memory for for next uh, two three weeks like how exactly data is stored and how pipeline interacts with this memory okay so ideally we we need uh, almost uh, no latency while accessing our code or data and uh, the memory should have infinite capacity so that our uh, binaries and the data set that we are using in our application should fit in right and in case of uh, instruction memory uh, control flow prediction should be perfect otherwise as we have discussed branch predictor can uh, degrade the performance in case of data memory we need uh, one more thing that is crucial is bandwidth uh, because if we uh, look into our out of order superscalar processor it may happen that we need uh, multiple uh, responses from memory for for multiple loads in the memory stage instead of only one load that we have discussed in a typical uh, vanilla five stage pipeline so bandwidth is another crucial point so we need uh, almost infinite capacity uh, zero cycle latency but also on top of that we need bandwidth so that we can pump data uh, back from our memory into uh, the processor so that let's let's look at uh, the world of memory hierarchy but before that what exactly is memory so memory is nothing but it's a storage element where we store data and uh, the data will be accessed by our processor because of the von neumann uh, model that we have discussed right the code and data is actually stored in the memory so a uh, bit of history it's been uh, 50 60 years uh, since uh, memory uh, came into picture or the industry the commercial entities uh, come into picture so there, there are two ways uh, memories uh, or the uh, different uh, memory elements are designed one is called the static ram another is called the dynamic ram where ram stands for random access memory uh, the notion of uh, random access is uh, you can ac access any location in this memory with, with the same uh, latency it's actually a myth uh, but at high level uh, this is the terminology okay you will see that uh, the latency may be different depending on where the data is and th these are the typical uh, ways where we can actually store data uh, so in the in the sram uh, actually we use uh, a cross coupled inverter i won't go into the detail uh, i hope uh, you have gone through some of these in the digital logic course and in the DRAM, the key is uh, it's a capacitor based uh, memory. Uh, so it, it actually stores uh, data in the form of charge. Okay. So let's look at uh, DRAM first. So you can see here uh, a capacitor and uh, a transistor. So a DRAM is actually a combination of one transistor and one capacitor. So to store one bit of information, uh, basically you need one transistor and one capacitor. So if we compare uh, DRAM with other memories that we'll discuss later, uh, DRAM is kind of denser because you are just taking uh, one transistor for storing one bit. Okay. As I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, the data is actually kept uh, in the cell uh, and it's based on the charge in the capacitor. So as long as the capacitor is charged, um, you will get a one. And if the capacitor is kind of uh, discharged, so you will get a zero, right? And since it's a capacitor based uh, uh, memory, we, we need to refresh uh, our capacitor periodically. So the notion of refresh is we should access uh, uh, the, the, the uh, capacitors regularly so that the charge uh, remains at a high level or at a minimum level which can allow us to get our data right 
So uh, that's why it's known as dynamic RAM uh, because we need to uh, refresh it dynamically at a, a fixed interval of time. So uh, as I have mentioned, uh, whether the capacitor is charged or discharged uh, will uh, denote your uh, one or zero. And uh, since capacitor leaks, uh, that's the fundamental behavior. Um, whatever data that we have stored, it may be one or zero. Uh, this will actually start losing its uh, charge over time, right? So we, we need to make sure that uh, it is charged periodically. Uh, otherwise, we will end up losing our data, right? So uh, this charging periodically is uh, known as uh, refresh or refreshing the DRAM. So uh, there is a fixed time interval after which uh, the DRAM controller or there is an entity which takes care of uh, DRAM has to uh, uh, make sure that all these uh, cells are refreshed. So uh, this is a high level view on uh, DRAM organization. So you, you can uh, look at this DRAM organization in two ways. So you can assume this is a 2D array uh, of rows and columns. So uh, these are the rows and these are the columns, right? And intersection of this row and column is actually giving you one bit, okay? So uh, when I say uh, intersection, it, it's actually the capacitor that is stored in that intersection is actually storing that uh, one bit, okay? You can also assume that uh, it's a two dimensional array of uh, what is called the word line and the bit line. So word line uh, is actually line, which is the red line here. And bit line corresponds to a specific bit. Right. So if you want to access any uh, particular uh, uh, data, so, so you need to uh, go to a particular word line and then within that to a particular bit line. So in other way, you have to go to a particular row out of all these rows. Okay. So that's why you need a row address decoder. And once you uh, find out that, okay, this is the row I am interested in or I want to get the data from, then you actually go for column decoder. So that will tell you which particular column within this particular row uh, uh, should be accessed. Okay, so we'll go into the detail uh, in, in a week or two weeks time. But uh, at this moment, you just understand that this is a 2D uh, array or a grid kind of structure with uh, rows and columns. Now let's look into uh, SRAMs. Uh, these are different from uh, DRAM. It's called static RAM, meaning there is no need to refresh as there is no capacitor involved here. But the downside is uh, it's actually taking six transistor to store one bit compared to one transistor in case of uh, DRAM, right? Uh, but the positive side of uh, this particular RAM is because there is no capacitor, it's kind of faster. So we can put this uh, SRAMs closer to processor. If you need uh, your latency to be minimal, uh, you should put SRAMs closer to the processor. But the density is low. You can't uh, put gigabytes of uh, SRAM closer to the processor. And obviously, since, uh, you know, it's kind of taking six transistors to just uh, store one bit, it will be costly than DRAM. So there are other factors uh, in terms of the cost, but uh, at a high level, you can assume that since it's taking more uh, transistors, this is one of the factors that is uh, deciding uh, that the cost of an SRAM. Okay, so now the problem is uh, we, we discussed about the SRAMs and DRAMs and uh, one, once you cross that, there will be hard disk. That is actually storage, uh, not memory. Uh, so we won't be discussing that for, for the moment. So the difference between the storage and the memory is all, all these are volatile. So the moment you uh, power off your system, all the data go. But in hard disk, hard disk it, it still remains and uh, you kind of uh, use it whenever you kind of uh, reboot or whenever you run your program, you demand the data uh, from from your hard disk into the memory and then uh, run your program and execute the program right so if you look at uh, the the trend between sram and uh, dram you you will find that the latency difference is a bit huge right so if you are using a small sram uh, the latency will be like few cycles from uh, processor's point of view and uh, if we consider DRAM, it will be like hundreds of cycles. 
Now think about your five stage pipeline. We, we have talked about uh, memory stage uh, getting over in one cycle, right? So that that's a myth. Uh, in reality, it can take hundreds or maybe thousands of cycles in a multi-core system. Then, uh, as I have already discussed, uh, if, if your uh, memory is faster, then it will be ex ex expensive, right? So that's why SRAM is uh, the costly one compared to the DRAM or uh, the hard disk one. So uh, this this values are kind of uh, recent, but but this uh, prices and 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 uh, this, this notion of cycles may change over time. There are uh, emerging technology in the form of flash memory, uh, non volatile uh, RAM, where you can actually keep your data even if uh, the power is off. So I'm talking about non volatile uh, DRAM. And then, then there are other things that, that won't be part of uh, this course, but uh, that those are kind of recent technology. So uh, as we have been uh, talking about the trade-off between size and latency, because size provides the capacity, right? If, if your memory is big, so you can store more data, but that also affects latency. Why it is, it's a pretty simple analogy. Uh, if you are working on a pretty small uh, memory, uh, then it will take less time to search for anything, right? Uh, well, technicalities aside uh, but if you are going for a big memory it will take more time to uh, actually search for uh, your data right so th that's the high level difference how size is affecting latency so we, with that uh, let's discuss why we need a memory hierarchy yeah we, we talked about memory but uh, why you need a hierarchy of memories well the key point is we want memory which is both fast and large that means let's say latency of uh, zero and infinite capacity, right? That's not going to happen because if your memory is huge, then it will be slower, right? So you can't have it in a single level of memory. So you can't have one black box, which can say, okay, uh, this is my processor. This will send the address and say, okay, give me the data, right? So one memory, with can store huge amount of data cannot uh, provide you almost zero latency right so instead of that why, why not create a hierarchy of memories where we provide uh, latency uh, or uh, reasonable latency uh, closer to the processor and uh, once you move away from the processor you provide more capacity okay so uh, that's the notion of memory hierarchy and why we need uh, memory hierarchy Right, so we will store uh, data closer to the processor uh, with the memory which is faster, and uh, data away from the processor uh, which is having high capacity. So th this will be uh, a typical uh, memory hierarchy where you have a CPU and multiple levels of memory. So we can assume, let's say we have an SRAM and DRAM. Your DRAM provides good density, so uh, the storage capacity will be higher let's say in GBs and uh, SRAM will be in KBs or MBs, right? And uh, the capacity of uh, these SRAMs are obviously uh, greater than the register files that we have discussed and uh, the DRAM capacity is uh, more than the SRAM. In terms of uh, latency, again, uh, DRAM is costly uh, compared to SRAM and then the register, okay? If you compare bandwidth, uh cpu to sram bandwidth is high uh, compared to uh, the bandwidth between uh, sram and dram we'll discuss about that why it's uh, low uh, so one thing that uh, you should keep in mind at this moment is dram is actually not part of the processor uh, or the chip uh, whereas sram because it's closer to processor in uh, modern machines you will find that th this is the processor itself so you have a cpu and uh, sram uh, inside one single chip okay and so uh, the, the formula or the protocol that we will follow is whenever we are going for a data access if it is present in the fast memory which will be in the form of SRAM or we will see that uh, the, there is a notion of uh, CAS uh, which is actually implemented in the form of SRAM and if it is present there in the CAS then it's a low latency access if you uh, get a hit here you respond back to the CPU and if you uh, kind of miss 
then you go to the DRAM, right? Which is the higher access latency DRAM. Right? So with that, I will stop here. Thank you.